What's up, Fire Guy crew? Um, do a little something different today. I'm going to do a, a vape video for all you vapors out there. For everybody in my last video that said, man, I was a killer cloud you blew out, man. What are you vaping? Well, I'm going to explain it all right now. And sorry for this weird camera setup because I don't usually do videos like this. My camera's down here and I'm looking over here so that, you know, when I go to my build, I can do that. Um, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be the, you know, one of the worst vape videos you've ever seen. Because, uh, you know, I'll be holding shit up to the screen going, can you see that? Can you see that? Is it focused? If you ever watched a bad vape review, uh, that's how they do it. So, uh, anyways, first I'm going to take a little toot off my uh, mod here. And blow it at the camera because that's everybody thinks that's cool. I mean, that's mostly what vape videos are, right? Every vape video I see, I mean, yeah, man, fucking rip trippers. I'm vaping right now. Uh, 26 gauge canthal, man, even though that's 28. Uh, parallel coil, man, 0.28 ohms. Just chucking the vapor, man, chucking the vapor. Like that. I'm going to try not to do any of that, but I may. Who knows? So here we go. What I got right here, and by the way, this is like, as I mentioned, the worst setup ever. Jackson's going to run out in a minute and tell me he wants some Cheetos or something. So, yeah, my phone's going to go off. That's Jake right there. Rock. If you haven't got Jake's uh, rock ringtone on the Zedge app yet, you should probably go there and do it. So anyways, this is my uh, Nemesis clone from Fast Tech. It's like $25 and it takes like six weeks to get from China. But it's the best thing you can get if you're broke. And for anybody that's not familiar, this is a mechanical mod, which means there's no electronics in it at all. Let me take it apart here for you real quick, just in case you're not familiar with what a mechanical is. The switch in it is right there. That's it. When you push down on the bottom, the contact rises up and it makes contact with your battery, which says fire guy on it backwards. Maybe it's not backwards when the video comes out. I don't know. First time I've done this. So you put that back in and your lock or your safety to turn your mod off and on is this little lock ring right here. When it's in that position, you can fire it. When it's screwed back, you cannot fire it. So when you carry it around in your pocket, that's how it is right there. <laughs> These uh, holes in it, right around there, there's some holes in between that crack. That's a vent for your battery. These are like a high discharge lithium ion battery in here. And at the top side of it, there's an adjustable pin. This pin right here screws in and out and falls out when you unscrew it too far. And that's what makes connection with your uh, your dripper, your atomizer. This is a, uh, I guess you'd say a pretty highly modified Patriot clone. Um, I got this off eBay for like 25 bucks. So basically what you're hearing right now is gonna blow your mind that the setup I'm using cost me less than $50, this whole thing. And basically, you could probably win a cloud competition with it if you wanted to. Uh, it's got very low voltage loss. The way you test voltage loss is with a little voltmeter that goes in line here. And voltage loss is just how much voltage you lose through your device to your atomizer. Um, this has eighth inch drilled holes in it. Both sides are drilled out eighth inch. And I've also got the top of it drilled out so that my drip tip has a huge hole in it. Is that tripping y'all out that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the camera here, but I'm not looking at the camera because I'm looking at my screen over here? Anyways, I'm sorry about that. But that has a hole drilled through it. It's about a 3 8 hole, maybe 5 16 So there's a lot of airflow going through here. And with a mechanical mod and a dripper, Basically, you build your own coil, which is what I'm going to do in this video. That is a parallel coil, 
with 28 gauge, which means it's two strands side by side wrapped around something. And that's where you get the parallel part of it from is it's two strands side by side. And then at the end of each strand, the little tails that hang out of the coil, those are twisted together for better continuity. Um, so as far as the deck on this atomizer, there's three screws on it. The center one is your positive and the outer two are your negatives. You could run up to four coils in this thing. Um, maybe six or eight coils if you're really freaking talented, but I'm not. And all this white junk in here is just cotton. It's organic cotton. Shit you get from CVS. Here's some right here. It's just organic cotton. That's what you call your, your packing or whatever. That's what you drip onto that holds the juice. So put a little drops on there. And... When it's unlocked, you fire it, and it heats up those coils, and it vaporizes that juice. And that's all there is to it. And this is what all the real big vapors are using. If you want to produce a big cloud, get a lot of vapor, this is what you're going to want to use is a mechanical mod with a dripper. So once again, this is a Patriot rebuildable atomizer that's got some work done to it simple stuff you could do at home with a drill press and this is a nemesis clone from fasttech.com that came from china and i have a sony 35 amp high drain lithium ion battery which basically means it's got a shit ton of power there's 35 amps in this little battery i said sony it's an e-fest sony makes some too but this is a 25 amp 2500 milliamp hour battery and they're pretty badass. Um, to charge the battery in these devices, you need a standalone charger. You cannot plug the device in and charge it like you would a uh, uh, simpler, you know, smaller, more expensive style, you know, from the gas station type of a device. You just take this battery out, put it in the charger, take another battery out, load it up, and you're good to go for another day or half a day or so, depending on how much you vape. Ah, see how I did that? Pro. So I just picked up this Veritas, which I usually don't spend a lot of money on shit like this, but I've been told, and I've been paying attention, this is the bomb, apparently. This is what you gotta have, you know, if you're gonna be fucking cool. Uh, this is a Veritas. It's $120 for this little bitch. Um, I opened the box up. I expected it to... You know, a little midget jump out and give me a handshake or something. That didn't happen. So, all the special stuff must be in here. This is your top cap. And this is what's referred to as the deck. This right here is a volt. It's an ohm meter. So, when you build your build with your coil, you can tell how many ohms it has. And the ohms directly relates to your cloud production. As well as how much VG versus um, there's vegetable glycerin and there is shit that's an antifreeze. I'll remember it in like 30 seconds. And there's nicotine. There's only three uh, ingredients in this besides the flavor itself. This I picked up at a little vape get together. Northern Lights, U Yukon Gold. It's kind of a fruity taste. I like the fruity f flavors. Another thing is if you're going to be uh, dripping, as they call it, you're going to want to get what they call a premium juice. A lot of these premium juices are a high vegetable glycerin content. Um, and you're going to want a really good tasting, high quality juice. Uh, this would usually go for about $20 a bottle. Normally, I go through about one of these a week. You don't want to go get the bullshit juice that, you know, gas stations or cheap vape shops may sell. You want to get the top of the line stuff that's going to taste good in your dripper. So what I'm going to build in this Veritas, and what's so special about this Veritas is it holds vertical coils. The coils are going to actually stand up in the device, and you can do dual coils in this. But what's special about this is that well that's in there. This well is very deep, so it'll hold like a milliliter of juice. Um, 
you can see how deep this well is. And if you pack that with cotton and you have your little cotton wicks coming up into your coil, you're going to be able to drip this a lot less, which is pretty handy because you don't have to keep pulling your bottle out of your pocket. And it takes both hands to do it, unless you're driving. But, of course, I don't do that because that sounds dangerous. So what I've got right now is a little length of 28-gauge Canthal. I'm going to cut it in half. And Canthal wire is basically stainless steel wire. It's a resistance wire. And I'm going to spin up a couple coils for y'all. I'm going to build one coil on camera. I'm going to build the other one off camera. Because ain't nobody got time for that shit. I've got my little vape kit right here. I've got all my shit in. And they make a little tool for wrapping coils around it. But to tell you the truth, I just use drill bits. Because works pretty damn good and my drill bit is in here somewhere that I like to use it's not that one that's an eighth inch right there I build some coils with that and if you're a beginner coil builder you can use something like this that's 28 gauge cans all twisted together um, you can look up a bunch of different coil builds but uh, that's the easiest way to start out with you just wrap that around something and call it good. Five or six wraps. Is my drill. And I'll just use this. Fuck it. Don't ask me what size that is, but it looks good. All right. Get to my uppy closey. That's what Grim Green calls it. All right, I'm going to start out this coil by just wrapping it around here. And I'm not too worried about the first wrap. The first wrap is always going to be kind of uh, spaced out and crappy. The second wrap is where I really want to start my coil. So as I bring it around the second time, I want to get it right next to the first set of coils. I guess the second set of coils, you would say. I'm going to wrap it around there about three or four times. These wires are so damn small you can barely see them. I usually just set the two coils next to each other and if they're the same distance apart or the same distance wide then I call it good. How the hell did I manage to twist this up already? There we go. Back on track. All right. You see that? It's wrapped around there. Two wires next to each other. There's a little bit of gap in there, but we'll fix that later. I'm going to take that first wrap off so that my coils are all nice and tight like that it's probably one wrap too many but we'll roll with it now what I use here is a pair of uh, safety wire pliers which is pretty fancy by what a lot of these guys use a lot of these guys make their um, twist with just like a cordless drill or something and that works great but this is a little more low-tech and simple and let's face it twist and wire together is what these damn pliers are made for so that's what I use them for. But they're not that cheap, so I suppose that's why a lot of guys don't use them. But we're in Fire Guys shop, so we're going to do shit this way. All right. That right there, my friends, is a vape coil. That is a 28 gauge parallel with twisted ends. Now this device here, I'm going to figure out a clever way to install this coil to where it is placed exactly where I need it and it does exactly what I need it to do, which are two things I've never done before. So on this particular device, the center post is your Neg is your positive. 
fuck. Don't get me lying. Center post is your positive. The outer posts are your negative. So I'm going to want this coil to sit in there right about like that. Can you all see that damn thing? And get a little clicky click. Click. I don't know if that freaking helps any. I sure hope this damn video turns out because I've sure put a lot of time into it. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is unscrew this little screw here. Zoom back out in case that's not working. Unscrew this little screw here and go ahead and wrap my wire around that ground post. Put a little hook in it like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I should cut it now too. Most people use like toenail clippers to cut their vape wire. And it seems to work pretty well. I haven't found anything that works better, so that's what I use. And tweezers. You need tweezers. Unless you got little damn fingers, which I don't. Booyah. See how I stuck that tool through that coil? Whenever you're moving stuff around and adjusting your coil, if you stick something through the center of it, your coil's going to remain the way it was. It's not going to get tweaked out of shape. So as I tighten this post down, keep that tool in that coil. That way it doesn't come unwrapped on me. If my first build on this device comes out good, I'll be freaking surprised. All right, I just went around that center post with the tail end of my vape wire and I put another twist in it. I like doing that when I do two coils if I've got the chance to. The way it gives me, there's no, the two coils are built into one strand of wire, which to me makes more sense. So I'm gonna put this little nut on here and it is tiny. There we go. A little tightener upper screw here. Okay, now if I turn this machine on, it's going to read amperage to me. Right now I've got 0.53 amps. So if I do another coil exactly like that, I should have approximately 0.25 amps, which is pretty damn low. Uh, this build here is built at 0.28. So if I get anywhere close to that, it'll be what I'm used to vaping. And uh, just to be cool again, I'm going to do this. makes a great great vape video right there that's all you gotta do really all right we are back just put my second coil in here there they are side by side two parallel coils I'm gonna trim off the excess give a little pinch and a little bendy roundy action and there we go. It came out to 0.28. I don't know if y'all can read that because I sure as hell can't. I can read it in person, but not on that damn screen. So I got a 0.28, which is 
which is pretty damn good. Now, if I put it on my device, what you're going to want to do, a lot of people say that you should torch your Canthal wire before you use it. I don't ever do that. What I do instead is just heat it up before I put the cotton in it. And that burns off all the coating on it, all the nasty metal tasting bullshit. And then you're ready for the cotton. Or you could just torch it first and burn it all off and save that step. So as I put power to it, it's going to glow all pretty. Ooh. Now at first, you're, just, you're going to see that smoke that's coming off of it. It came off the first time, but... <clears throat> now what you're going to want to do is heat these coils up and squeeze them together. I've got one of these coils that's got a pretty bad spot in it. I'm just going to heat them up and get my tweezers in there and squeeze them together. You want your coils nice and close to each other. It's going to produce a better produce a better vape if your coils are real tight. There we go. See how the heat from the... Shut up, Jake. See how the heat from the center out? And they get real hot real fast? That's what you want right there. Now I've got a little piece of canthal wire in here. I've got to cut off without fucking anything up. All right. She's a chicken. All right. Now I'm going to put cotton in it. I'll probably uh, cut the video when I'm doing the cotton on this since I've never put cotton in this atomizer before. But these are some cotton balls that have been unraveled. And basically what you do is just take section of cotton nice little strand of it there and I usually wet my fingers a little bit and just start twisting it together like that you don't want it too tight between those coils but you want it basically filling the inside of the coils without restricting the cotton because if the cotton's all pressed together like that, it's not going to wick much juice. So you want the cotton to be a little bit loose inside those coils uh, and not real tight to where the juice is not going to wick up real well. Because as you're firing that coil, the more juice that can boil up through that wick, the more cloud you're going to get. So I'm going to vape, or I'm going to cotton this first wick, and I'll come back and cotton the second part of it for you. Hopefully, it'll go better the second time. I'll be back, and I'm back. Finger gun. Any old fan of the finger gun? I don't know. It's worth a shot, right? All right. What I made here is a little hook out of canthal wire. And I figured out the easiest way to put cotton in this. By the way, I couldn't have chose a harder build to do the first time on camera. So the best way I've found to do these vertical coils is make a little hook like this. You put it through the coil and then hook that cotton and drag that cotton up through the coil with the hook. So that's basically what I'm doing here on the back side of this because I don't want to have to do it twice. So I'm just going to do it to where I can see the damn thing and y'all are going to miss out. But there we go. I just pulled it through. Pull it through till it's nice and consistent, and then cut the extra off. You want to do all your cottoning with your uh, with your mod locked so it will not fire, because if you fire on dry cotton, it ruins your cotton, and you don't want that shit. So I'm gonna cut off the excess cotton here, and I don't know exactly how much excess I need. But I'm going to use this excess cotton to pack into these wells where the juice is going to go. I'm going to pack a little bit in there to start off with. 
and I'm going to put a little juice in it because the juice kind of acts as like a, a glue. Once you put juice on the cotton, it kind of stays wherever you put it. So I'm just going to pack a little bit in here. Looks like I've about got it right. Cut a little bit of this off. If you cut too much off, you could always pack some extra little pieces in later. The only part that really matters is what's in your what's in your coil. Pack it in each side. A little fast motion action. Dun da da da. All right, now we got to put some juice to it. Basically, you take your little eyedropper here and dab it on there. Until your cotton is fully saturated with juice. By the way, propylene glycol just came to me. Is the other ingredient in vape juice. I'm sure a lot of y'all were screaming that at the freaking YouTube screen. Um, vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol are the two main ingredients in vape juice. Which doesn't sound healthy, but I'm still alive. What the hell? Who cares? All right, there we go. Got it all full of juice. Now I can unlock my mod, give it a few test fires, and see how it vapes. Oh yeah, vaping, oh, I can smell that flavor already. Every build and every mod is going to have its own flavor characteristics, I guess. And this Veritas is supposed to have a really good flavor characteristic. I don't have a drip tip for it handy. How about this? Let me go get a drip tip. That way I'm not just mouthing the whole outside of this thing. I'll be right back. All right. Back once again for revenge in my all black bulletproof vans. Anybody who knows what song that's from, you're pretty cool. I should probably send you something free. I've got my drip tip on it. Looks like a skull. It's all badass. Mm. And uh, now's the time where I get all hyped up about how badass this coil is, man, and all the flavor it's producing. And all the vapor it's chucking. So here it goes. Take a righteous rip off this bad boy. Mm, mm. Oh, and then you got to do this. You turn the air hole towards the camera and you blow into it. Woo! Yeah, see? See how excited you guys are? So anyways, that is my build of the Veritas uh, Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer, RBA. And uh, tell you what, it tastes really damn good. So I'm going to vape this for a while till it gets all the weird tastes out of it from the cotton and the wire and everything else. You drip it about four or five times and you get, you get the real pure taste from the juice. With it being a new device also, it's probably going to have some bullshit in it. A lot of guys are real anal, I guess, about washing their stuff when they get out of the package. And I don't care. You can make my juice in the damn bathroom for all I care. But um, it'll be tasting better in three or four drips. And I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching Fire Guys videos. Peace out.